Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break. Today we want to talk about pricing, pricing technology and how AI can help you with that. And we will try to find out or how try to help you to take out the guesswork out of pricing. Now, finding the optimal pricing is very, very difficult. So, and it's a very complex topic. So with me on the show, I have Simon Lukov. He's the founder and CEO of dynamicpricing.ai. Simon is a three-time founder with two exits in 15 years of e-commerce. He began his career in consumer electronics. He discovered the importance of pricing optimization and spinning off that he expanded a competition intelligence service to 37 countries. In his latest venture, Dynamic Pricing AI, he provides AI models, pricing policies, and tools, and we want to dive into that right now. So let's welcome Simon to the, sh to the show. Hi, how are you today? Hi, Klaus. Uh, happy to be in the show. I'm great. How are you doing? I'm very well. Pricing is a very complex topic. So while I was preparing for the show, I found out how many bits and pieces fall into that. And you're working on the pricing sector and finding the best prices for a product for a very, very long time. Now, tell me, what, what's the most common error you see merchants do when it comes to pricing? Um, well, there are basically three things that uh, merchants are thinking when they want to find the, the, the right price. Uh, first of all, if they have new product on the market, they, they, they want to test different, different prices. So they don't know what works in terms of pricing and they use some kind of price testing solutions. Um, then when they know their pricing, probably they want to optimize for uh, either profit uh, or more sales, more, more revenue. Uh, per category or on a store level. Uh, and the third thing is uh, often they, they want to find competitors and to to track their prices and to, to see uh, their promotions, how it's going on in the competitive landscape. Mm -hmm. Let's start with, with competitors. I found this very interesting because there are some areas in business um, like airlines, like hotel booking engines who are on the forefront on offering you the best pricing or their best pricing in the moment. Now, a lot of merchants, specifically smaller, medium enterprises, trying to do competitor research on a manual level. So from time to time, they go to a competitor and see what's happening there. Obviously, this is not the best way to do that. Um, right. How do you do competitive analysis when it comes to pricing so that you're always up to, to speed what's happening in the market? Uh, well, first of all, uh... We have a uh, scraping engine that is taking um, all of the data from particular websites, scraping promotions, availabilities, um, prices, uh, descriptions of the products. And then we're trying to find uh, identical or similar products. Uh, so with identical products is uh, a bit more easier and it works for some industries, but um, most of the time, let's uh, let's say for, for fashion, you cannot find uh, the same product and then you need to use uh, new techniques uh, to, to get descriptions of the products and, for example, use LLMs to find similar products based on the description and mm -hmm. show, for example, uh, white holidays dressed uh, and uh, their prices, their promotions, their positioning, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, AI obviously helps with that a lot. And with dynamic pricing.ai, you came up with a solution on help that. Talk me through what AI can do for you as a merchant when it comes to pricing. Um, okay. So um, I started with um, price testing. Uh, I will continue uh, with that one. So first of all, uh, many people are using uh, all techniques like A-B testing to uh, to test several prices. But uh, right now, uh, we have new frameworks uh, that, that are uh, that are coming. And um, it's more efficient to use like, uh, techniques like multi-arm bandits or, or bandits, uh, some kind of uh, fast reinforcement learning, so that you're not splitting the traffic on 50-50, uh, on but uh, allocate more users to, to the price that is um, going toward uh, your uh, objective, either revenue or, or profit. So uh, 
you are not spending so much uh, while you are testing. So that that's that's the first thing that um, AI is bringing uh, as a new technologies. Um, on the on the second thing uh, for price optimizations, uh, there are there are new techniques. Uh, in the old days, uh, people need first to get um, to get data, uh, to have historical data, uh, to to fit that data, and then to see how how the demand is going to make a forecast, and on top of that forecast, uh, to make some optimization. Uh, now, now these things is um, uh, made in one step. You do both. Uh, uh, demand forecasting and uh, optimization in one step, which is a um, huge improvement. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, for, for the third thing is, um, as I told you, uh, the, uh, the help of uh, large language models, which uh, can, can find uh, similar products so that you know the competitive environment uh, easily. Mm -hmm. That's more or less uh, new stuff. Okay, let's talk about stock optimizing. Um, just talk me through how does that work? How, which kind of different factors are considered when it comes to optimizing the the, the price on your stock levels? Yeah, sure. So um, let's say you you are selling uh, winter jackets and you have like four months uh, period uh, to sell your goods. So. In the beginning of period, uh, you have uh, different pieces on stock. Like you can have uh, 20, you can have 200 pieces. And uh, you put this inventory data within the model and uh, several prices so that um, the model every day optimize based on that um, time horizon and that uh, time, time is going on. Uh, and uh, the model knows how many pieces have been uh, already sold. So if the sales is going well, the model will be conservative. It will try to sell them on a higher price to get more uh, profit, more, more revenue. But uh, if the sales is not going well, the model will try to lower the price uh, to be uh, a bit more aggressive so that uh, you don't need to think about changing prices. You just need to, to set up the model um, and uh, on top of that, you can include uh, additional data points. You can tell the model how, uh, what's your spend for marketing uh, for that category, for, for, for another category, so that the model is getting all the expenses. Uh, the model knows uh, how many pieces you have and uh, try to find the, the optimal policy uh, towards uh, revenue or profit or, or mixture. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the marketing aspect for it, and I'm a marketing guy, so that's always interesting for me. It's like, uh, obviously, the, the prices for your Meta, Facebook, Instagram ads, Google ads are going up and down, also like demand. Are there other factors that you can slot into the calculation when it comes to marketing, like your website or other marketing segments? Uh, yes, sure. Um, you know, it's difficult to... Uh, to get the marketing for, for an uh, individual product, but uh, you can put the marketing for, uh, for one category or for, for another category. Uh, you can put also the spend for, um, for, for storage. So, you know, if you are selling refrigerators, this will take uh, huge space, uh, but if you are selling some small stuff, uh, it won't cost a lot. So, uh, you are giving the marketing spend, you are giving the uh, storage spend, and the models uh, knows uh, what's, what's the cost of having this product. And based on that, uh, decides what's, what's the policy, what's the price that will uh, optimize for uh, profit uh, or for revenue, for more sales. Mm -hmm. now, you're doing this for a very long time. You're working with some big companies. Give me an example of what kind of results do your customers see? Maybe a, a real life example um, before and after implementing price optimization. Um, that's uh, that's a good question. Uh, so um, I can give you an example with uh, a pharmacy company. Uh, they used to have uh, six stores when we started, 
and uh, in uh, one year and a half, uh, they they went in top top three uh, uh, pharmacy in the country, only having good pricing, uh, good process for that one. So uh, th they had like uh, thirty thousand uh, orders per month, so uh, thousand order per day, which was huge improvement for them. Uh, from one side, um, um, you can see the uh, the, the improvements uh, shortly while playing with uh, with tacticals uh, tactical tools. Uh, but the good thing is that uh, pricing is not uh, you are not doing it uh, day to day, but it's it's a strategy. You you decide in advance. Um, if you uh, are going to be like discounter or play high low uh, or play with dynamic pricing, this is a long-term decision. And after that, when you decide uh, which path uh, you take, uh, the policies, the structure, uh, and uh, the entire process is set up and um, you more or less are crushing the competition. So everybody uh, who does not use systematically pricing uh, is getting uh, someday out of the game. So that, that was one example. Uh, the other example uh, is when people are using us for uh, making promotions. They're reporting that uh, their uh, sales is increasing uh, by 15% or more. That was, that was the number. Uh, and um, they, they're saying that after the promotions, uh, people are still uh, willing to buy the product. So it's it having the uh, huge impact. So uh, automated promotions uh, is working. Uh, you don't need every day to decide what to promote. Uh, there are tools out there that can decide uh, instead of you. And... And after that, when you see how some products uh, are selling uh, on promotions or without uh, human interactions, then you can put human that pay a little bit more attention, put more marketing money on that, and the product can skyrocket. Mm -hmm. uh, you touched on you don't want to give too much um, power to the AI assistant. And you also said there is a strategy behind that. So how do you bring this together? How do you make sure that your pricing AI assistant does not go crazy and start selling under price? Well, so basically, how do you t teach them the strategy behind your brand, behind your company? And how does the implementation look like? Well, um, after uh, having the data from the model, uh, we always put uh, business rules like uh, margin guards, like uh, roundings, like uh, shipping costs that uh, it needs to take into account. So the managers are uh, always sure that uh, the model will uh, not undercut uh, below some some margin level. So um, uh, on the, on the recent days, uh, it's. Um, it's this trend that um, you uh, you go uh, you go uh, on um, a pricing competition, and when you reach this this minimum level, you can go uh, a bit higher. So you you make like uh, like a loop, uh, and um, if there are guys on the market that that are following you, they're going after you and. Uh, they do the loop with you. So um, imagine you you are selling like uh, headphones, and uh, everybody is undercutting with um, one cents or two cents. Uh, so everybody is uh, undercutting, and uh, usually uh, people um, squish their margins. So mm -hmm. one of them. <laughs> Is rising the price uh, within the night when there is no demand and everyone is following, uh, following the guy. So that's that's another trick that uh, managers are using not to undercut and to be sure that uh, prices are in a range that uh, they're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. 
I think it's an interesting thing that people fear, or some people fear AI. I see AI like an empowerment tool for a business. It just streamlines things, um, get more data results, or you get more results from the data that you have. So how long does it take to train the AI before it really can start optimizing prices? Um, well, if we can uh, pull your orders in for like um, two, three, six months, uh, we can train the model uh, on uh, on historical data. And uh, when we have that, when, when we have uh, your orders, you can immediately decide how to play for for some categories. So uh, you can you can either play for uh, for more sales or for more profit or or to make a mixture. And uh, uh, when, when you are giving good input to the model, some uh, reasonable uh, goals and targets that that you want to achieve for the next period, the model uh, is uh, taking into account uh, this target and uh, is giving you back the prices that that will make uh, this this target this revenue or uh, or that profit so uh, having the data it's quick learning uh, when we don't have data it very much depends uh, on the traffic uh, on the page visits that that, that you have so um, the, um, let, let, let's say you, we put uh, several prices for for a new product uh, and it um, depends on the visits. If you have uh, 100 or 1,000 visitors uh, on the page, the model uh, will change the price based on the conversion rate and uh, will decide what price work, uh, works more uh, for your objective. Uh, and it can be um, adjusted by um, some meta uh, metadata uh, I mean, parameters, uh, if the model should be aggressive uh, or a bit conservative. So its experimenting stage uh, could be regulated. So uh, if, you, uh, if you want to see if you can sell on a higher price and uh, the model tries to prove that one uh, on uh, first dates, so uh, it will then sell the product on a higher price and uh, you get nice revenue. Uh, but if you want to be sure that uh, you want uh, your experiment is um, kind of conservative, you need to spend several weeks to test several prices. You can, you can go with uh, a bit conservative uh, policy. The model will still find Depends on you, depends on the market, depends on the goods. Uh, the model can learn uh, quick or be kind of conservative based on the parameters of the model. Mm -hmm. Talking about markets, um, are there any specific industries, niches where it works very well? Or are there, on the other hand, are um, areas in business where dynamic pricing might not be a good idea? Uh, I think... Dynamic pricing is uh, working very well uh, in the uh, fast-moving uh, consumer goods, uh, grocery, online grocery. Uh, it, it's working uh, very well. Um, the models are are working uh, well uh, when when you have some idea how to execute your your strategy in terms of um, pricing, uh, revenue, uh, profit. And um, let's say you want you want to be affordable for some categories, and you want to be profitable for some categories. So uh, imagine uh, you won't have transaction people to come on your store and speak that you are affordable. You need you need the model. Many people have that in mind. Managers want uh, to have such policies, but they could not execute it uh, optimally. So uh, this is where the, the power of the models are coming. You install the model, uh, you give some data, and the models are recommending price. So you can take, uh, you, you can take the prices, uh, think for yourself, and uh, change your store. 
uh, it's it's not a black box. So uh, mm -hmm. those kind of models that that we are using are very transparent. So uh, you know everything. You have uh, price, several prices, a range of prices. You're giving to the model, uh, asking the model what would be the next best price, and the model is giving that that one for you. And uh, the model knows the context. So if you are giving competition data, marketing data, uh, seasonality, stuff like that, uh, mo the model is taking into account all that data points mm -hmm. and uh, help helps you not to be biased. You know, people, we are kind of biased. Sometimes we think that someone might be competitor, but it, actu it actually that does not hurt our sales. This is where the, the models um, uh, are showing us where we are biased and uh, give give us some new ideas. Yeah, I, I like the idea that um, you have a, a neutral assistant who is not biased and, and gives you the facts and not the, the gut feeling on, on your pricing structure. Let's talk a little bit about the, the um, onboarding, the installation, and what does the day-to-day -day life of a uh, merchant working with your tool look like? Um, depends if you have a custom store uh, or let's say Shopify, Magento, Salesforce, uh, Cloud Commerce, or, or or PrestaShop. That was the the drivers that 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 we have. Uh, the time is different. So with uh, with cu uh, custom shops, it might take uh, two weeks to get uh, orders from your system. Uh, to see how you are positioned in terms of uh, profit and revenue. But for uh, Shopify and uh, the other uh, commerce providers, uh, we can uh, immediately take like uh, hundreds of thousands of orders and uh, see where you are, how you are positioned. Uh, and then uh, we are we are making this um, actionable goal oriented dashboard. Uh, so within like week two, you can see uh, what the models are recommending to you, what actions you may take based on the model. So uh, in terms of implementation, I may say this one is very quick. No. Uh, regarding the competition intelligence is a bit slow. Uh, we need to gather information. Uh, that might take a bit more time, like like a month. But uh, if you are only uh, in pricing uh, optimization, that's that's kind of quick. Okay. On that, you mentioned a couple of numbers before. Who's your perfect customer? What's what's your perfect size of a customer? Um, I will start who is not the perfect customer. So uh, we are not for uh, dropshippers. Uh, we are known for um, garage base e-commerce guys, but um, more for uh, established businesses, the ones that, that are making like eight, nine figure digits uh, in, in revenue. The guys that have transaction transactions, they have um, solid customer base uh, and uh, they want to grow. Uh, so that's that's our uh, ideal customer we're not focusing on uh, big enterprise but something something in between mm -hmm. who's the one working with the system is this the marketing manager who's was in the organization who uses the system um usually you know, those are um the sales team the, the guys that um are selling the, the goods uh, that might be product managers uh, that that might be uh, decision makers that are planning strategically what what to do. Um, it might be product marketers because uh, they they can see similar products uh, on their own, and uh, we save a lot of time because uh, without having uh, automation. They have to click and try to find local uh, or uh, other products similar to theirs. So they are also uh, using the system. Uh, also, if someone is um, like uh, 
pricing on an international level. They are setting policies uh, for for their uh, subsidiaries in the other countries uh, from the headquarter level. So mainly um, pricing and marketing guys and uh, the strategy guys uh, within the store. Okay. I think these guys pr probably have much more experience when it comes to pricing than I have, because I see that pricing is a very um, complicated topic. There's so many elements in there and a tool like yours definitely helps in that. Before our coffee break comes to an end, is there anything that you want to share with our listeners that we haven't touched on? Um, well, uh, we will have a release of um, our compute unit that uh, that will come in uh, in two weeks and uh, we're partnering also with uh, IBM uh, for that one. So uh, we'll have like cloud unit that is pulling in data and calculating new prices and uh, sending back to you based on the model, uh, small but efficient engine uh, for store owners. And uh, we think that uh, that will be the thing that we will focus uh, on uh, next period. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about the pricing. Uh, what is uh, what needs a, a merchant need to calculate with when they want to use dynamic pricing? So first thing is how many products uh, you are selling, uh, then how often you want to reprice. So we have people that are pricing one twice per day, and uh, we have others that are pricing like uh, 30 times per day uh, very, very quickly. So that's that's the second thing. Uh, th the third thing is which model are you using? Uh, are you using price testing or some of our uh, AI models? So the cheapest is uh, $29. The most expensive one is uh, six, $640. Uh, dollars uh, depends if you put uh, more dashboards uh, analytics the price might go to a thousand dollars or more per month uh, and th that's for for the pricing for uh, competition intelligence depends on the scope mm -hmm. it, yeah it it might be like uh, from like 20k up to 100k something like that per, per year okay yeah okay i understand you have a shopify app where can people find more about that more about our um, content yes yes uh we listed the app uh, several months ago it's called price explorer ai it's uh, only price testing uh so uh, right now several uh, conversion rate uh, optimization guys are using the models and several shops, uh, some Shopify Plus guys are using uh, the, the tool to test price. Uh, and uh, we're going to put uh, some more models inside and it's a uh, work in progress. Okay, okay. Where can people go to find out more about your uh, solutions? Um, People can find more about us on dynamicpricing.ai. So mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, uh, documentation for all the models there. Uh, they can even try some of the models, see if they're working or not, which is the first thing. Like, if you don't know if dynamic pricing is for you, you can make a simple test, like having static prices and having dynamic pricing. You test that one. If dynamic pricing your path, you are welcome. Okay. I would definitely recommend that to go to your website and, and figure that out. Um, pricing is so important. And we mentioned before, a lot of people do this um, by just their gut feeling and being biased. And I think there is a lot of potential in doing it the right way. Sure, sure, sure. Thanks so much for your time, Simon. I think this was a very interesting take on how you can optimize your business. And I hope a lot of our listeners will go to your website and check it out. Thanks Thank so you very much. Thank you, Klaus. Hey, Klaus here. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Before we wrap things up, I've got a couple of important points to share. 
Firstly, if you have enjoyed today's episode and want to support the show, here's a simple way to do it. Help me out with that algorithm magic by liking, commenting, and subscribing on your favorite podcast app. And if you're feeling extra generous, leaving a rating would be great. Your support helps me bringing more impactful guests on the show, and it makes it easier for others to discover the podcast. Secondly, I want to talk about to all your business owners out there. Here's a question. Are you tired of juggling everything in your business while struggling with your marketing tasks? Fed up with hit and miss experiences of hiring freelancers or agencies that don't quite get your vision? But perhaps you're not ready to commit to a full-time in-house marketer just yet. Well, I've got a solution for you. Introducing our fractional marketing team. My team and I provide top-notch experienced marketing professionals to become an extension of your business. Not only will they save you up to 50% on cost compared to traditional hires, but they also take care of all this time-consuming, repetitive and complex marketing tasks that have been holding you back. And this way, you can concentrate on what truly matters, the core of your business. To learn more about how we can help you to scale up your online sales with a fractional team member, head over to our website, smart-ecommerce-marketing.com, or reach out to me directly and I'll get you the details. You will find the links in the show notes. Thanks for being a part of our podcast community and remember your support means the world to me. Until next time, see you then.